Fun fact. Did you know that most women in labor poop themselves? Thanks, Mom. It's the M Word. Hello and welcome to the M Word, a millennial podcast by millennials. I'm your West Coast millennial, Connor. And I'm your Lone Star millennial, Kyle. Pew, pew. We're just two friends trying to solve each other's problems, and then hopefully one day, maybe, a generations. Kyle, how you doing? I'm good. Did you like my pew pew? That's my new thing. Yeah. Yeah, that was really cute. It's like pew, gun pew. violence in, in Texas. Yeah. Let's talk about it. I can Let's kill humans as long as they're um, near my body. Yeah. That's right. the rule. Yeah. And anybody who is near me is a threat. Yes. Absolutely. Very immediately. Very threatful. Can I tell you something about that actually made me super, super uncomfortable until I actually finished watching it? Yes. Um, is I was watching uh, Donald Glover's new music video, This Is America, which is yeah. amazing and beautiful and, and incredible. And then the next suggested video is, oh, shit, I forgot the rapper's name. But the title of it is I'm Not Racist. And the thumbnail on YouTube is just a very large country white boy with a Make America Great Again hat. And I've watched This Is America over and over again because I can't stop watching it for some... Actually, no, there is a reason, and it's a beautiful reason. It's such a very, very good music video. And every time I kept seeing it, I was like, oh, that makes me so uncomfortable. And then I finally clicked on it because it had 63 million views. And I was like, I mean, it can't be that bad if it's got that many views, right? There's only so many neo-Nazis that are on YouTube. And so I watched it. And it was so uncomfortable. Have you heard this this or seen this music video? Yes, I've seen the music video. For I'm Not it's, Racist? No. Wait, they made a music video of I'm Not Racist? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Did you even listen to me? Hold on. Yeah, I heard what you said. I thought you were talking about the music video of... Um, what's it? I thought you were talking about this the music is a, video no, of Donald Glover. Gosh, Lover. you weren't even listening this to me. America. Oh my gosh, no. I was watching that music video for This Is wa- America. And you saw a secondary one. That I kept guy. I kept refusing to watch because it felt right. so, I, it just made me so uncomfortable because it was just, I was like, Ooh, what is this video about? And so I finally watched it and it's a rap that's all about, like the first half of the music video is the country white boy yelling at a black guy and the second half is a black guy yelling at the white boy and at the end they come together because they had a conversation with each other so it was very very uh raw conversation on race written from this rapper and it sucks i can't remember his name but i'm sure people know about it if they know what i'm talking about but i was like whoo i don't know why that pops in my head i think just talking about gun violence in texas um but yeah that's the racist video for today. Connor, how are Thank you doing? Thank God. Yeah. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. You know what's on my mind, though, Kyle? Sorry. What? I took, a drink. I took because... a drink at that exact moment. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I wasn't sorry. sure if you just became immediately disinterested in what I was saying, which would, I was, uh... wouldn't be the, the most unrealistic thing to have happened. To be fair, but... I do have Donald Glover's music video just going in the background at all times, so I, I, did, I was uh... watching that. He just shot a guy. Yeah, I get that. Oh. Anyway, yeah, what's going on? Uh, you know, we haven't talked about politics. For good reason, it sucks. No, listen, this is like there was a the the thing that everybody it's on everybody's mind. Everybody talk everybody's thinking about it, but nobody's talking about it. Why aren't the leading men of our generation talking about the thing that everybody wants us to talk about? People have been begging us. People have been tweeting at us, Kyle. No, no. People have been posting on Facebook and Instagram. No one has done that. Look it up. Everybody check out our Facebook <laughs> and Instagram for all these comments and asking of begging us to talk about North Korea. Oh, God, no. They've been saying, Connor, Connor, you have the answers. Talk to Kim. Talk to John Noon. Talk to the South Korean leader whose name I don't know. So, uh, it's Moon. President Moon. Because it's such a cool name. That's why I it's- remember it. What's Moon's first name, bud? Um, well, actually, Moon is his first name because their last name is like... No, sorry. Their first name... Hold on. This is the first name Moon, president? Moon is his first name because their second... No, hold on. Hold on. I got to remember my Korean heritage. Okay, there's something about that they normally call people by their last name instead of... I don't know. So I think Moon... That's, hold no, on. No, no, no. That's like Hogwarts. 
You're thinking of Hogwarts. Am I thinking That's of Hogwarts? That's why they call people by their last names. Yeah. Yeah. Potter. And so the house of the house of Moon. Ooh. Or I might be thinking of Pokemon because that's my one of my favorite Pokemon games is with Sun and Moon. I actually I think I was around then. I really do like the idea of them walking up to each other like like Hogwarts house style at the at each other's border. Like, so, Oon, I heard you're not you're not doing so well in the house cup this year. And then wait, was that Kim? And then Mo- then Kim Jong un is like, Yeah. It's because we've been working on a project that is going to blast us out of the the academic wizarding field that you've never even you've never even seen of. Connor, I'm not afraid to say that there are absolutely no parallels between the Korean Civil War and Hogwarts. I'm not afraid to say that. Now, if you can I'm tell not- me where in Hogwarts the parallel DMZ is, I will absolutely 100% buy into this beautiful, beautiful metaphor that you've written for us today. Otherwise, it's absolute garbage. Is the DMZ the Forbidden Forest? I was going to say DMZ. What are you talking about? Connor, do you know nothing about the world? The DMZ is the demilitarized zone that's between North and South Korea. Uh, yes, okay, I'm sorry, I don't know your fucking acronyms, okay? Literally, that's the only thing people call it. Everyone knows the DMZ. Speaking of that, did you watch the GIF of all of the North Koreans, uh, or of North Korea, of Kim Jong-un's limo, and he had, like, 12... Bodyguards running around his limousine. I absolutely did. Yeah, it gave I me life. want that everywhere I go. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful sight to just see all those lovely oppressed Korean bodyguards just chasing their oppressor. I mean, it is Stockholm syndrome to a fault, really. Right. Oh my gosh, that's what I need to do. I should have been born as Kim Jong Un's son, or no, like I think he killed nephew. Him. I don't, okay, his nephew. That is the weird thing about this, like, whole situation with North Korea is, like, obviously wanting to bring, like, North Korea into the table. And, like, this is the first meeting that North and South Korea have had in, like, decades. And it's very, very good because they're actually pursuing peace. But we also have to kind of remember that, like, Kim Jong-un is still a guy who had his brother murdered and I think there was another family member who he had assassinated and then, like, other people in his... Uh, country have like been tortured so there's Ugh. also that part of it that's just that's like so i know so boring i know why can't we like, just blow up their nukes can we talk about there? the cool things about north korea yeah um in k-pop that's a fun one um instead of k-pop it's just in k-pop and it's all just it's all just remixes of the national anthem. It's all that, and then their top song is also "We We Want Food." We please, we are hungry. We We Want Food. So that's a little that's a little thing. I don't want to minimize their struggle, but so why your the hell song, did you bring it up on our comedy podcast? Because it's st- I'm, I didn't say I I just said I didn't want to. <laughs> But that doesn't mean I won't. It's kind of like I don't want to go to work tomorrow. But I mean, I'm going to go. But then again, that's also I do that for a selfish. Well, no, because I do both for selfish reasons. I go to work for a selfish reason. So that way I can like make money and pay bills. And I also want to minimize the terrible atrocities of North Korea because it's sometimes a little funny. Yeah. Lincoln was a dipshit, huh? The movie? No, I was just talking about the guy. I just thought we were just going to like start dipping on all historical people. All historical people. Yeah. You know people who are in the past? Fuck them. Do you know that Jesus was Jewish? <laughs> A lot of people don't talk about that. You don't see that at the the church. I I was just blasted with an image, Kyle. With just this, this image of a meme I've seen on Facebook. And it is a meme of Jesus and Satan arm wrestling. Oh, uh, that's a very, very good one. Yeah, uh, and under a good one. and underneath it is just like, which side are you on? Who's gonna win? Epic rap battles of history. I do. Th- <laughs> I think your definition of a meme is a little loose. 
And <laughs> just uh, that, that, yeah, there is no way. The to... definition of a meme is very loose. It's a very it's loose a very term. loose. Let's define meme, okay? So it has to be um, cute Kyle, or sad. you don't have to define meme. It's It has a, an official definition. What is the official definition? Please tell me right now. Yeah, it's it's an idea. It's a, an element of a culture or a systemic system of behavior that may be considered to be passed from one individual to another by non-genetic means, especially imitation. So was that was that just talking? Did they just define it as like any form of communication? Because no, basically, what it just described was any form of communication. It's an, uh, no, it, that's not no. Because because Connor, me we're, meme, no we're memeing. You. We're memeing right now. No, no. I like the word no. I said no. You didn't say no just because like it's an interesting thing to say, right? It's not just like a fun or like a, a an aspect that you think is like oh that's cool or that's funny or that's just something. So like I want to continue doing that. You know what I mean? I'm honestly, I don't know anything. Are you talking about Let's, memes? Listen, we need to go back to Kim. I Nobody needs I, to go back to Kim. We need to solve North Korea. I know we're not going to jump into it too far because like, I'm sure we'll have an episode later that, that we solve North Korea. But this time... Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? what are you playing? I, I, Jackson, I was still was on the meme <laughs> website and it and I just something called January dot meme and I'm gonna show this on the video but it just says somebody some, touch somebody a touch a me <laughs> that's that's so unprofessional Connor um, I'm so sorry yeah can you please apologize to yeah, our thousands I'm of my listeners phone. I'm really sorry guys I didn't mean to do that yeah that um, was unprofessional yeah no it's not it's not something. That, that I would normally do, but it was still, again, very humorous. You know, I don't think we have to solve North Korea because it seems like Trump is doing a great job. And um, and he is going to win the Nobel Peace Prize. So that's something we all have to accept. Actually, did you know that he can't win it this year because the nomination process is, was like due in January when all of this was passed so that he isn't nominated in any way? He's not... He's not going to win the Nobel Pre- Peace Prize. The Peace Prize. Thank you. Um, welcome to the Nobel. No, he's the not going to win the Nobel Peace welcome, Prize. No. Welcome to the Nobel Peace Prize. This is a fun prize for people who can't get the Nobel Peace Prize. Hello. This is really funny. I really like it when Kyle makes fun of me on, on the podcast. That's like legitimately the only thing we do on here. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Connor, do you want to know something exciting? Personally, because yeah. I don't, yeah. I mean, the world exists around me, but the world's purpose is to just kind of matrix me and serve me in that way. And so let's forget about the world for just ever. Forget about it. Forget about it. I have made a concrete step. You know, a, a part of our brand here at the M Word is that we are juice fluid. Um, and that's very important to our identity as millennials. We love fluid juices. And I've taken a step, a great millennial step towards that today. Can you guess what I now own? Um, fruit juice. I mean, in a way, I own... Av- I, avocados. I own the idea of fruit juice because I own a blender now. And that's a big step for me. I can blend wow. anything. I can... If, if my doctor's like, hey, your iron levels are low. I'm like, no problem. I throw some nails into my blender and I just juice that up real good, and my iron levels go Do you go have up. an industrial-sized blender? Do you have an industrial no. strength blender? Connor, it doesn't have to be big. The nails are, like, super small. So it's not... You don't have to be big. So... Oh, my goodness gracious, Kyle. When is Will It Blend going to come back? Oh, no. When I I made my first smoothie today at home, and it brought me a, a lot of satisfaction. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I did kind of just throw shit together because that's not – I didn't care enough about, like, looking up, you know, stuff for how to make smoothies. So I did just throw um, some frozen strawberries and Greek yogurt um, and some ice into a thing. And it was kind of bland. I'm not going to lie to you, but it did feel healthy, I think, just because of the consistency. And I think that's what blending is really all about. Blending is all about making new creations. Exactly. It's all about finding yourself in the blender. Yeah. Throw whatever you, you feel might you might want to enter your body. 
Exactly. Check your fridge. Check your pantry. Check your cl- check your closet. What about a butter smoothie? Can you just bl- can you blend your butter? Stick a butter in there. That does sound like a very Texan thing of me to suggest. Oh my God, Kyle! I had a scene partner once where I was rehearsing at his house, and he said, "Do you want something called bullet coffee?" And I said, "I love coffee, and bullet sound sounds like that makes that coffee raging, and I want it." And he said, okay. And so he started making it and he throws a literal stick of butter in this blender with coffee. Oh, God. And he just. And it was like, here you go. Get ready to feel your feel your 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 toes for the first time in your life. Connor, can you not feel your toes? (laughs) What are you talking about? Nobody can feel their toes. I do like the idea that in this bullet coffee smoothie thing, drink, that the butter does serve as the bullet because as soon as you eat or drink a stick of butter, that food is going to go through your body like a bullet. And it's just going to shoot right out the same consistency. You drink it on the pot. Yeah, because it's so fast. But I don't know if you know this, bullets are real fast. Why, Why don't we eat more food on the toilet? Why don't we allow our body to enter and exit at the same time, you know? It it is efficient. You know, honestly, I think it it's a it's an evolutionary problem, right? Our body isn't that good at at absorbing or it's not that efficient at absorbing things and so it takes like an hour, right? That's what they say with swimming. Speaking of absorbing, I do want to move on to our question from one of our listeners. He he had a very tough time bringing this up to me. It was a very intimate detail but i'm just gonna i'm gonna shoot it out you ready are you gonna shoot it out like a bullet this comes from our listener gabe and he says gabriel how can i date someone without freaking them out with my obsession about beyonce (laughs) now i mean we all we all deal with right we all have our beyonce's in our life right kyle your Beyonce is you like watching The Bachelor. No, not anymore. You watched The Bachelor. Yeah, and for you a know season. it's there. Yeah. And I, you can't you can't unwatch it. No, yeah, I can't take the that season back. It was really gross. So when you tell people, listen, I watched it and I love it. I don't watch it anymore, but it's still in my heart of hearts and I still like talking about it all the time. Right. I still love learning the lore of The Bachelors, one through however the fuck many they've had. Like 80. And I myself one day would like to be one. Yeah. And I mean, not like a bachelor because you're you're already one, but like to be the bachelor on The Bachelor Show. You are going to have to tie this back to Beyonce because at this point, most listeners have forgotten what the original question was. So I think you're going to need to- How do we allow the partners of our future yeah. to be okay with our obsession with Beyonce? How can we help solve Gabe's problem? So here's what I think. First of all, Beyonce is Bay, And I think that that's okay. I can't stop rhyming. Please pay. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Thank you for your contribution to the... You're absolutely welcome. I think we can move on. Um, no. No, no I, I, I have 100%. Okay, so like Beyonce is very much a, 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 a very important aspect of many people's lives. There is, I mean, she is a phenomenal singer and artist and generally person. I don't think she hits babies. She doesn't punch like puppies or anything, right? No, she just punches toddlers. Yeah, but they probably deserved it. They were probably like back talking her or just like whatever They're whatever to happened be to single Destiny. ladies and they were doing it like garbage because toddlers can't dance for shit. Right, and it's like we all know you're single ladies you're cuz you're toddlers. Stop dating people. Come on. Is that is that is that the newest Beyoncé song that you know Connor is single ladies? What's the most recent Beyoncé song? Lemonade. I don't think that that's that recent. When did Lemonade come out? 2 years ago? I mean that's pretty uh, recent, and her whole and you know chronicle of art that's pretty recent because she's been doing it for a long time. Hmm. She has a song called "Haunted," where at the beginning, now Gabe, we are going to solve your problem eventually, but at this point, we're just going to talk about Beyonce because I mean, what else is there to do? So um, she has a song called "Haunted," where 
is that at the beginning it starts with a recording of her winning a like a contest when she was in Houston and the announcer calls her Beyonce Knowles and I wanted to slap that announcer's arrogant face. Now Beyonce was probably like six or something, but still the arrogance in that announcer's just oh and the winner is Beyonce Knowles. And it's like what? I do have a really hard time when people have names like that and I'm like you just just spell it out. Wait, does she have an apostrophe at the end of her name? Yeah, there is an accent. Well, it's not an apostrophe. Beyonce. It's an accent, but yeah. Or an accent, sorry. Beyonce. It's Beyonce. Okay, now I'm getting attacked. It's Beyonce, huh? It's, no. You feeling Beyonce? I, we're just offending Gabe now. I mean, to be fair, we're always going to be offending Gabe because us talking about Beyonce to Gabe is like talking to the Pope about Jesus. So and here's what you like, do. You I, know, take- I know about him. Okay. You take your friend that that you're that you're trying to seduce and and first you <laughs> your victim you the lay, victim of your seduction start you lay there. him down as you would on your on your bed you look at him dead in the eyes you make him a cup of tea you oh, invest uh, in the stock market for him oh god this is going somewhere and you you trick you put your fingers around his nose and you you dig one out for him I don't care where you put it. Just put it anywhere. Connor, the fact that you are in a, a relationship right now based on this conversation is <laughs> is proof of some you, greater and being. You whisper, you whisper in his ear and you say, Beyonce is my life. And then, then you both come. Oh, God. Oh, no. See, your first mistake was that at no point did you put on a Beyonce song. I don't know enough about Beyonce to make like references to her songs. I really, I, I, there was a lot of opportunities there. There were. I, I, I could have said, "Listen, we're all single ladies. <laughs> I love lemonade." <laughs> and, and just keep going, Connor. This is just a fun little game where we talk about all the songs that Connor knows. Just go Destiny's for it. Destiny's Child. <laughs> hey, ladies, get information. Ice is back with a brand new edition. No. What are you doing? Who are you? See, at this point, again, we are just offending, Gabe. It, this is just all so offensive. Are you also frantically Googling Beyonce songs? No, my brother keeps on calling me in the middle of the podcast. What's the song I'm thinking of where... Oh, EXO. That's a good song. Guys, let's just rank all our Beyonce songs, okay? Personally, I've been singing Love on Top a lot. We even pl- I was singing it before we even started this podcast because it's just like in my brain right now. And it's just so good, and I love it so much. Halo, that's a classic. Irreplaceable. Oh, I didn't even think of Halo. Yeah, Irreplaceable is a classic too. Um, Run the World. Um, uh, Naughty Girl, that's another old one. If I were a boy, that one. If I, I were drunken a love, thing. come on, drunken I love. love Water. I, I didn't even. I didn't. Even, I, I. I'm just so. I'm so unprepared, and I'm not even actively searching for these songs. I'm just like sitting here listening to you read these things off. Lemonade is her most recent album, so that's something we've all learned. Called it. I mean, we and us and uh, Gabe especially learned it, which is important. He probably didn't know. He probably didn't know. That Lemonade was her most recent album. A lot of people don't know. She kind of flew under the radar for that one, and that's because she didn't put it under her name. Um, she just said, um, Lemonade by Mrs. Knowles. And I was like, but that's not even your last name. You're Mrs. Carter. Like, so it was very confusing at first when she put it out there. Mrs. Knowles? Yeah, and then it was just like, are you selling Lemonade or are these songs about Lemonade? Which song here is about Lemonade? I, I can see it now. Just, just several, several lines of different colored lemonades, and it just says Knowles on the on the the glass bottles. And she's got a pink one. She's got pink lemonades. She's got yellow lemonades. Please name another all, yellow lemonade color, because you did say yeah. multiple colors, and I could only think of pink and yellow. You have, but well, God, there's more than one types of yellow, you idiot. You got banana. <laughs> there's real there's real drunk piss yellow. That's one. There there's uh there's uh pineapple. That's the same. There's mango. I think mango's orange, isn't it? You have burnt 
Mango is a very dark yellow, you uncultured swine. I am. I'm just so uncultured. Pink? You have hot pink lemonade? You have... How How is pink lemonade made? I think it's um, women have to make it, I think is the rule. It was like from a time long gone by. And it was just but like, it was after like the 1800s because I'm pretty sure that's when pink became a girl's color. I don't remember when. Yeah, because L- blue used to be the the girl's color. So I am looking at the Lemonade album, and what I think is weird is that she didn't title, she didn't give the full title of each song. So like the first track is "Pray You Catch Me," but I know for a fact that the first track is the full title is "Pray You Catch Me Drinking Lemonade." And that's weird that she cut that. And then the second track, she did the same thing. Hold up? No, it's hold up. Get me some more lemonade. Don't hurt yourself squeezing those lemons. And that one was tricky because it didn't say lemonade, you know? I really, can I, I'm going to pull up just some lyrics from a Beyonce song and I'm going to say it as best I can. I'm glad that you explained everything about what you're gonna do in the meantime here listen to your interlude of kyle singing love on top because baby it's you you're the one i love you're this was the not a, one this I was need. not supposed to be an opportunity for you to do that. i see come on baby it's you you can taste the dishonesty it's all over your breath as you pass it off so cavalier but even that's a test. Constantly aware of it all, my lonely ear pressed against the walls of your world. Now that's actually kind of sweet. Well, she's a very I mean, not good... sweet as in kind, but like the lyrics are very poetic, and I think that's really pretty. She's a very, 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 very good artist, and that's why I think Gabe needs to share that with any loved one. I don't care if it's a one night stand you should just... or if it's a relationship. You need to listen to Beyonce's entire uh, art art collection, art form, before any sort of intercourse takes place. You should read, like, not this song, because that I feel like that wouldn't put you in the right mood, but you should read one of these to your proposed lover. Yeah. That, I mean, honestly, though, I think that might be too far. If, I'm, if I can just be real here for a second and give some real honest advice, Gabe... I think that you obviously have to trick somebody before you reveal any sort of, of insanity. Obviously. That's the only way to deal with the relationship is you have to trick them. Exactly. So you don't say, hey, I absolutely 100% love Beyonce. And if I could live within her being, I would. No, you can't say that. Instead, what you do is you just go like, oh, hey, have you heard of Destiny's Child? And then that's like only a third Beyonce, right? So then you trick them in there. And it's like, oh, hey, have you seen um, uh, Dreamgirls? And then you just watch that movie featuring Jennifer Hudson versus Beyonce. And then you watch Pink Panther, which is the one exactly. <laughs> Beyonce movie that nobody talks about anymore. And then, so after you finish Pink Panther, which that's a great pull, Connor, because I forgot that she was in that. And so that's amazing. <laughs> so after you finish watching Pink Panther, you go, man, I wasn't that impressed with that movie that Beyonce, um, Beyonce Knowles, is that her name? Beyonce Knowles? Um, I wasn't that impressed with that movie. But did you know that she also like does her own like music? Hey, let's take a listen. And, and then don't, you, you and listen. don't tell them, but throughout the entirety of your relation anytime you get in the car right anytime you go out anytime you're just like walking around just have just a little bit just a little bit of beyonce exactly just all day and it's just then it's in their mind that that is what you are that is your essence it is is when they're around you they hear maybe i'm a halo but it's really it's even quieter than i can't do that because i'm afraid it's not going to hear in the microphone maybe i'm a halo halo I think that Hello. you should only speak in Beyonce Hello. Beyonce song titles. What? And so you're just like, man, <laughs> let's get in formation, right? Or you're just like, oh, gosh, I wish I had a halo right now. You know who I think should run the world? Girls. Who run this, mother? Girls, right? Girls. <laughs> um, and then you're like, oh, hey. Who, who runs this, mother? Who runs this mother? Girls do. Hey, I r- hey um, how about, how about, um, sorry. 
I mean, that that is a Beyonce song title, but also it could just probably be used anywhere. Like, it probably wouldn't pick up on that one. And then you're like, hey, driver, can you lift the partition? And then that's whenever you profess your love and you say, I'm I'm crazy in love. Don't you dare mention that white boy here. The cadence at which you say every one of those sounds like it's leading into Ice Ice Baby. That's because he picked the most generic rhythm ever. How now? Hannah Brown, Hannah Brennica. I had to memorize that for my sophomore year of high school for my theater class because we did a lip sync battle. This has all been I so much memorize fun. I my part. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more about this lip sync battle. No, please don't. One time, this girl was doing a uh, We Are Young and she was supposed to be lip syncing and then she started actually singing and the theater professor was like get it and she just was blasting we are young and was she good granted she was a great singer yeah it was it was actually pretty phenomenal but there was somebody who did it right after her yeah and she tried to do it too well i think to go back to beyonce obviously we've solved gabe's problem but beyonce has a song on lemonade called 6 inch connor for our, we have a listener base that is outside of the United States, and so I want to be a more global show. I want to be more aware of everyone that lives. Going, I thought you were going somewhere else with that. I'm so okay. You don't know where Sorry. I'm going because I'm just I'm. You're sitting right next to the car. You're sitting next to the car. I'm driving the car. You're sitting next to the car, and I've already left you. Um, I might have run over <laughs> you. Who knows? Anyway, she has a song called Six Inch, and. I want to be able to translate that to our international listeners. So, Connor, just go ahead and tell me um, exactly how many centimeters uh, six inches is. That'd be great. So, thank you so much. Frantically typed. Hey, Siri, how many centimeters is six inches? It's 15.24 centimeters. Very, 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 very good. Now, how many inches are in a foot? How many inches are in a foot? Yeah. 12. How many feet are in a yard? Three. How many yards are in a mile? Several. See, this is where it all breaks down. This is the problem with the imperial system, and that is today's problem that we are solving. Who uh, imperial versus metric system? Who wins in this versus. battle? Versus. In Who this, will survive. I can tell we're you. We're not right- talking about which. One, we're not talking about which one is like empirically better. Notice, I said empirical. Yeah, but those, those are two different words completely. But empirical the, is spelled but, with an E, and imperial but wait, you is spelled know, with an I. You know things are closer to the same thing whenever they sound closer to the same thing, Kyle. No! That's my new You know that's the sound. way... So I think... So let's let's map this out. So you have a yardstick versus a meter stick. Yeah. I'm imagining two two people in, a hand, in hand-to-hand combat. One has like a, a foot like a dagger... Right, and the other has, and he has a yardstick in the other hand, like a sword, and then the other one has a meter stick in his hand, and then what does he have at his? He's got like one meter, and then I guess a centimeter. We're talking about weapons, Kyle. Well, we're talking about weapons. If you had to pick between a yardstick and a meter stick, which one would you want to have? The longer well, one, right? Not necessarily. What if the shorter one is just within the range that I need? To fight you off. I could parry off your yardstick. It's too long. It's too long for you to handle. I can tell you that the shorter one is about nine centimeters short. Do you know what would reach it perfectly, though? A yardstick. Your dick. Oh. Oh, if I had a meter-long penis, let's talk about blood flow for no, a second. No, no. Let's, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. I, I really would liked the thing we were talking dead. about earlier. I would be dead. No, here's the deal, Connor. From yard to meters, <laughs> just, you would think, hey, a yardstick and a meter stick are the same thing, right? No, a yard is longer than a meter. A yard equals 0. 0.91 meters. So that's nine centimeters oh, shit. off. I totally got that wrong. I thought that the yard was longer than the meter. That's what I just said. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought it was the other way around. I thought a meter oh, was no. longer than a yard. Yeah. See, isn't that crazy? Why do we have two systems for the same thing? That's like, hey, if we had one set of numbers and then another half of the world, I'm sorry, the other like 90% of the world had a better set of numbers. It was just like, why do we have two sets of numbers? Because I, I'm sure CGP Grey has put out a great video discussing the difference between the imperial and the metric well, system. I don't and why know who that guy is. 
Listen, if you would just engage in our audience, maybe you would. I uh, don't know who this person is, but he's, here's he's my definitely problem. definitely not our audience. He's a busy, busy boy. I want to just, just, we just need to talk for just a moment about how much better the metric system is. Because, Connor, what, at what temperature does water boil in the in uh, imperial system, that is to say Fahrenheit? What degree Fahrenheit does water boil? No one I'm knows! Pretty, I'm pretty sure it's like... 200 or some crazy degrees. No one knows. What temperature does water boil in Celsius? It's 100. 100, yeah. Do you know what, what temperature? Zero. Yeah, freezes is zero. That's so simple. It's so stupid Listen, simple. Listen, we're not, I don't think you're going to be able to win in the argument of whether or not something is more beneficial for society. That's not what we're talking about. What's going to win in a fight, Kyle? What's going to win in a fight? In, in Metric versus imperial. Fisty cuffs. In this example, the imperial system showed up in the ring and like the metric system is like this well-fed cultural boy and the imperial system is showing up like an emaciated, like very mentally unsound person who is four feet tall. Imagine you have the mentally unsound person four, f- one, one yard tall, but then he runs Miles and miles, Kyle. He runs miles, not these kilometers bullshit. He runs miles and miles and miles. He'll he'll take him down. He he has the stamina. Well, it doesn't affect stamina. If anything, he would be so exhausted trying to figure out how many feet are in a mile. Connor, do you know how many feet are in a mile? This is not about his brain. Do you know how many feet are in a mile? Brain. This is not about his brain. 1,500, I think. No, I think it's like 5,000 something. No. Oh, yeah, shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally, you know what's going in my head right now? What? Is that, is that table of contents in the math book in like second grade. And I remember looking at the little imperial system and it going like boom, boom, boom. And then as soon as it went to, from, from yards to, to miles, I just, I, I cracked. You cracked. And you then were, yeah. I couldn't handle it. So, I mean, we're kind of out of time discussing this. Obviously, metric wins uh, in every way. Now, the problem why we haven't switched to metric is because we think it's going to be hard. And there's a picture in Sweden whenever Sweden switched from driving on the left-hand side of the road to the right-hand side of the road. And there was, like, accidents all during that day because people are like, oh, shit, I have to drive on the other side of the road. So it was like that was a crazy day. But then after that, everybody drove on the right side of the road and they got over it. the correct side. The correct side. Yeah, I meant it in both capacities. That is interesting. We just got to make the change. Why does right mean correct? Who decided that? Some right-handed bastard, probably. Well, that's exactly what it is. Left-handed was seen as abnormal, so the right was correct. Right, right, right. was right. Right, I'll be always be right. That's what I say. That's my motto. You some some might say. So what I'm saying is that we need to start defacing speed limit signs. That's the first thing we do. We change them from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. Everybody's car and- has both on them, so it's not gonna like people are gonna get it. But we do need to change the signs because that's like imperial bullshit that we just have to get over and just like we have to force feed it down people's throats. I need to go to Canada, Kyle. I need to see those kilometer signs again. Oh, now here's the deal. My problem with driving in Canada is I never know how much I can drive over the speed limit because like I know exactly how much I can drive over the speed limit without like a cop really wanting to slow me down in miles per hour. But it's like in kilometers per hour, is it? 10 over is it 15 over can i go 20 over i don't know i don't know in la it doesn't matter you just go 20 30 over and hope to god no cops are around and just no, hit a, not hit a pedestrian well, i mean they're not around if you're white so oh because i i drive a white nissan versa yeah and also your skin thank That's you so much so for true. listening to the m word i started the end this week what? Why wow. did I do that? Thank you so much for listening. If uh, if you please have not done so already, go to iTunes and subscribe and leave us a rating. The ratings sincerely help. We have. Um, oh, I wanted to bring up the reviews that people left on on there. They're so very very kind. And- While you do that, uh, please follow us on Twitter at mwordpod and on Instagram. Mine is that boy Co- Connor. Goodness, at that boy Connor. Kyle's is Kyle the Turner. Uh, send us an email, ck at mwordpod.com, just like Gabe did to get his question answered. Thank you, Cindia, for our cover art. Her Instagram is at with love Cindy. 
That's S I N D I, not like C I. Yep. Um, thank you to Grant O'Brien for our intro and outro theme music, Millennial Juice Fluid. I love it so much. Grant, if you're listening, please make more music, not just for us, but for the world, because you're good at it. Also, please consider donating $1 a month to our Patreon so we can continue to make good, 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 good shows. Yeah. So I want to thank two reviews. This is what we're going to do after every show. So if you go and leave us a review on iTunes, you can like leave an honest review and then like put a little message in there if you want me to if you want me to read it on the show. You know, make me say butts or something. I want to thank RAR66. I don't know what that stands for. Um, probably their initials. So it'll be Rachel A- A- Arendelle Ra- um, Reynolds, born in 1966. Fun, fun. I love these guys. They're funny and talk about some silly stuff. It's just listening to friends chat, especially enjoyed the movie talk. We didn't talk about movies this week. We really failed. Raw. We really tried not to talk about movies. Yeah, the first Actually. few shows were very movie heavy. We we talk about movies a lot all the time, just in life. I also as soon think- as we got that review, we were like, mm, we changed our minds. We didn't want to yeah. talk about movies anymore. Well, Sorry, we're just kidding. I like. I- uh, let's. We're gonna have a moving picture section where we talk about the talkies. Um, I also want to thank Alf eleven twenty nine. Alf, of course, stands for alien life form, and um, uh, lovely, lovingly loves to eat cats. Lovingly loves to eat cats. Nice. They say super funny. Oh, they started off with multiple lols. Got real life lols in there. Super funny. Great dynamic. Feels like just goofing around with friends. Hey, Alf. I also think we're just goofing around with you, our friend. So please leave us a review and um, and so that other people can discover the show and so that I can read your goofy ass review on our show. Thanks for listening to the M Word where we... We we need a better sign off. We do need um, we need an actual sign off. Um, how about the M? Thanks for listening to the M word. We're not we're not we're not babies no more. We're adult millennials. Thank you for listening to the M word. We're dusty boys. Talk about dusty things. We're <laughs> the dust the D word. No, thanks for listening to the M word. Go fuck a rabbit. I don't like that one. Okay. It is a little beast, a bestial. Thank you for listening to the M word. Millennials are more than avocados. If we, if I say millennial one more goddamn time, I'm gonna blow up. Millennial. Say it. Thank you for listening to the M word. This week's M word, Mufasa. No, that's just stealing from <laughs> Unabashedly Obsessed. I don't even know what that is. Oh, that's a show on the on our there are podcasting friends and they do that every week. I mean not for M, they do it for F. That's weird though that you thought of that. Wow. Great minds think alike. Nice, unabashedly obsessed, right? That's yeah, which is also a very, very good show. And if you haven't listened to it, you should go check it out with Aaron and James. Thanks for listening to the M word. I guess we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.